Hi there, this is the third of the series of videos that uh, I have created. I am creating about Docker, the production grade usage of Docker. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, Docker Compose. I will explain more features of the Docker Compose and I also talk about Nginx web server, which is very important in this uh, Docker. Docker Compose provides so many features that helps uh, to orchestrate your application in different environments. Uh, it provides command line, it provides volumes and logs management for your services and cover all these areas. And I will move to uh, Nginx, which is one of the top uh, web servers that we used recently by most of the web applications that we see. Uh, it's, it can be used as a web, web reverse proxy. Reverse proxy is the concept that is frequently used in uh, multi-tier applications. Uh, when we have uh, our front-end separated from back-end through a web server, which provides more uh, security for our app. And in situation when we have a numerous application, for example, in modern web application, there's not one back-end. We have multiple hundreds or thousands of them services at the back end and all of them can be put behind the web servers and also through you know, load balance and uh, on top of everything it's not safe to expose the back end services to the outside world and it's extremely not recommended to do that that's why nginx reverse proxy comes handy and uh, in uh, Future videos. After uh, I talked about this, I'm gonna uh, talk about uh, situation when, for example, we have a login page, and we we want to restrict the brute force attack in this login page, so our login page is not uh, overloaded or killed. And I cover more Nginx features, and I want to add an, a database store service. So so far, we don't have any database yet. We don't have a storage mechanism, so I will cover database and I will explain how we can handle in work in different environments. So let's ju jump right into the demo. I made some changes on the app. First, I changed the syntax. Uh, I'm using Python 3. Uh, it, is it is strongly recommended to provide uh, type checking when we write uh, routines or functions in our application, we can provide the uh, input arguments, typing, and also the output. So this is the best practice to do that in Python 3. Uh, all of these changes are also provided in the GitHub, but I will cover the main things, main important things that uh, I have done uh, in this tutorial number three. So. I added the login mechanisms. Uh, every service that we write is it's important that we, we log everything that goes in and out of the service. So I added a login mechanism. Let me go into the login dictionary and tell you what I have done. So the main thing in Python log logging is loggers. You can have as many loggers as you want and you can name it anything you want. In the previous videos I talked about Gunicorn. It's a application server that we use to manage Python application, web application. So I, I have used uh, I used uh, Gunicorn loggers uh, uh, to log anything that goes in and out of the Gunicorn. And also the there is a root logger. Root logger is for all services, anything that comes to all service. So I say that anything that comes to our service, first log it to the file that I have added here, and then log to a console to Docker, so Docker logs can pick it up. I'm not talking about Python yet. In the future videos, I will cover best practices in the Python, how to log Python, and more advanced features of Python for sure. So the rest is very simple, and then I added a few routes to our application. Now we have a three, we have three routes in our web application. First is the main, 
the home page and then there's a login url that loads the html or login page and it's api that do the authentication for us that's the second one and i also i told my web app to load the templates from this directory And then let's go to Docker Compose. I added one more service called Web Server. I will talk about it in a minute. But let's uh, talk about backend. We have a backend application, as you know from previous videos. This backend application is loaded on port 8000. And also, in Docker Compose, you can define environment variables for your service. Uh, here I provided one environment variable called service logs directory, which is a directory where all logs are written to. Uh, if I go to settings.py, I see that this, I use this environment variable to log all anything that goes to my service. You can, you can have uh, as many environment as you want. We will see in the future videos. And uh, in Docker Compose, you can overwrite the command that is written in the Docker file. In the Docker file, we saw that uh, we have a command, which is the command that runs the image. But in Docker Compose, there is a feature that gives the ability to override that command. Sometimes I want to add more features to my command, or I want to test something, you can override this command. And the next thing is volumes. Volumes is for dual mounting of the content from in and outside of the container. Uh, first logger is that uh, I, want, I want to see my logs outside of the container. In case if the container is killed, uh, my logs are still persisted. Uh, and this is for my testing. So whatever is in current directory, while I'm developing, I want to be written and updated inside the container. Uh, the other features that Docker, uh, so in this logging, everything that you want to log is logs in your own uh, current directory. So if I go to my current directory, and then you see that I have logged uh, backend services, logs to this directory, a slash logs, a slash backend. And you see that my logs are already there. But you can also uh, have the docker log information for you, you don't need to provide a local directory for yourself. So I told docker that create a directory somewhere in your own environment, in, your, in, your, in the docker directories, and it will log everything that is in my logs directory inside that. But for now I'm going to skip that, let's stick to our logs. You can customize that as you want. So let me build the image once more. Uh, I'm gonna build the, the backend image once more. Okay, then I'm gonna bring it up. First, check if it's okay. Yes, it's running on port 8000. Let's go to the browser, port 8000, and it is loaded. And we see here that whatever goes, every request that goes to the uh, backend service is logged in the console. And we can see it in our logs directory. If we go to logs backend app.log, we see that everything is written in the directory. So you can, in case some errors happen, you can refer to this file and debug your code. The next thing I'm gonna cover is that using web server. So no real production server is. Uh, 
run without a web server. It's extremely recommended to use a web server when running your application because now my backend is exposed to the outside world and it's running on port 8000. Web server, I am using Nginx web server. Ng Nginx image to create a web server for myself. All I did is that I used the Nginx base image, but I changed the basic configs. Let's go to the config file, which is on the config directory. In the config file, I have defined uh, a server directory, which listens to port 800. Name for server is frontend, because that's the entry point of all the requests from clients. And I have defined access and error logs. It's recommended to define this so you can debug or monitor your web server. And then uh, you can define location directives. This location directive helps to redirect the requests. Uh, here it's that uh, every request that goes to the main and home directory or home URI of my web server is passed through proxy to my backend application. So what is this backend name backend coming from? So let's refer back to Docker Compose. And then in my backend service, uh, I have a service called backend. The name of that host name of that service is backend. So since this name is backend, I'm using this name in my Nginx company. So if you change this, you have to update the Nginx config to refer to proper, proper name. But I'm gonna stick to backend now. Uh, here I reverse proxy all requests to the root to the backend service. In future videos when I have more APIs, for example, I want to support authentication service, I can define more directives here that all requests for the backend go through the uh, API. Uh, yes, here uh, I've created my web, ser web server. Let me build the image, the same as previous one. We have a build uh, context here to build the image. I'm build. building the uh, web server image, it is built now. And then I tell my web server to map the port from 880, which is what I have mentioned here, to the port 81. Ideally, it should be 80, but since uh, my port 80 is already used, I'm mapping it to port 81, and this is a HTTPS port in case we want to deploy a secure HTTPS server. And the same as previous one, I have I want to volume my logs, anything that goes to the Nginx logs directory, which I have defined here. I want to get it out of container and monitor in my own. And I also mapped the config to the image in case I don't want to build image every time, but this is optional. You can stick to the Docker volumes feature if you want, but I want to see my uh, logs locally to monitor it. Let me bring up the backend service first. Is backend on the up? No. So I bring up the backend service first. And then here I'm gonna bring up the Person. Okay, it's ready to use. So this port is still in use. I'm going to disable it later, but let's go to port 81, which is where my web service is loading. And this is the logs of my web service. And since the web server is working fine, all the requests go to Nginx first and then they go to backend service. In case you want to know how the requests are going, 
let's look at the long frames. Perhaps another access logs. Here I can monitor all every request that goes through Nginx through this point. Right. Or on the other way, that's the one way to monitor that. Sometimes Docker Compose also uh, capture the logs of Nginx. Let's see if we can capture through logs command. You can capture logs of your Container, but seems it's not captured. But I have the I have enabled it for my backend services to log everything to Docker stream as well. So everything that goes to my service also Docker picks the uh, logs as well. That's pretty much all of I wanted to talk. All of these contents are uh, already on the GitHub repo. And then, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed so far. And have a good rest of your day.